Hello, everybody. Have you had a chance to play along with the five minute challenge yet? Today is day nine and the prompt is people. So this is going to be one when you see it at the end. If you don't know my inspiration behind it, you may not automatically think people, but I'm actually super happy with where this one got um, in the end because it's actually what I envisioned in a kind of abstract way. So I'm just starting out with some basic collage here. I used it. I use that craft um, water activated tape, which is a really easy way to add collage quickly. As you can see, I just used a paintbrush with some water and lightly um, put that on the back and that activated it. Now I'm creating a little bit of a wash here with some fluid acrylic, um, just a little bit of water. And I want that real transparent type of look. Um, Overall, this one is going to feel a little bit more muted, um, but that's the look that I was going for. Okay, so my inspiration behind this one is I was thinking with people, people in a crowd and seeing people from a distance and how you just kind of see like faces in the crowd. And so you'll see how I kind of bring that to life. And at least in my book, I really got it to where I'm quite happy with it. Um, it's not necessarily my usual style, but I don't know. I, I like to think that I bring a little bit of my style in no matter what I'm trying to do, but it's really fun to experiment with different things and to take an idea, to take a prompt and see if you can challenge yourself in some way to to go in that direction. When I normally create, I don't necessarily think of a prompt. I just get in there and I start thinking about maybe a color that I want to use or um, different things like that. I talked about in the last video for day number eight for ambiguous. I just use that as a chance to create like I normally would and just create like an abstract art spread. And so this one I'm leaning back into that prompt. So I have this stencil and it's a Donna Downey stencil. It's actually probably my favorite stencil in my stash. And I thought that the shape of it looked like faces that would be in a crowd. And so I took my sponge, stenciled some on. Um, I didn't want high amount of contrast with the background. I wanted everything to kind of ebb and flow together. Um, otherwise, I would have used a darker color and created some real deep contrast in there. I think that's what I normally would have done when I'm doing um, that design. I'm now adding a little bit of collage back on. I love to change up the order in which I do things because I think it really helps you to get nice variety in your work while still having that consistent look or maybe your signature style. By switching up the order in which we do things, it keeps things a little bit unexpected and um, we can't always then predict what things are going to look like, which I really enjoy in my artwork. So I'm creating a little spot here for that prompt tab to go. I wanted a little bit of a dark color underneath it, trying to bring it out, making it a little bit more readable. And you can also see I did some uh, gesso and paint underneath where it was going to go as well. And now with my pencil, just kind of going around where that's at and it just accentuates it a little bit more. Okay, so I'm doing pretty good on time and I could end right here. I know that this next step that I'm going to do is definitely going to take me over on time, but that's okay. I wanted to bring this idea of the people to the next level. So as I said before, this kind of looks like faces is what I was thinking in the crowd. And you know when they're drawing, like you're, they're teaching you how to draw in class, maybe like figure drawing instead of like taking the time to draw the face on, you just kind of do that cross over the face, that X over the face type thing. I don't know if I'm explaining to you guys what I'm talking about, but this is my thought with it, with these, the thread, the stitching that I'm going to do. Um, I'm just doing inside those shapes of those faces, doing that kind of, um, plus drawing there. Now my page is still a little bit wet and I'm going through multiple layers here. So it's not necessarily ideal. Normally I would recommend having your paint all dry before you're doing something like this, but 
trying to stick within those five minutes as much as possible. Now, I won't do this stitching in all of the ovals here. I think it creates a nice amount of variety by just doing it in some of them. And again, normally when I was do would do something like this, I would go with a contrasting thread color um, or something that's a little bit more noticeable. But in the end, that wasn't my goal for this one. And I'm quite pleased with the way that it did turn out just because it's what I kind of envisioned in my head. So it's just one of those that you kind of have to know the story behind, I think, a little bit before you really understand what's going on. One tip when you're stitching on paper, you can see I'm kind of putting those holes in the front of the paper first on some of those before I stitch up from behind. And that's uh, twofold reasons. When you're stitching on fabric, you can pretty much poke into your fabric unlimited amount of times and the hole will um, disappear for you once you take your needle back out. That's just the behavior of fabric. Um, those those woven pieces will kind of separate in order for your needle to go through versus when you're stitching on paper, you're creating a permanent hole and finding the spot that you want to stitch from behind, especially when I was trying to be a little bit more precise when I was stitching inside those ovals, um, it makes it harder. So if you stitch from the front to the back and at least create that hole for yourself, that can make it a lot easier. The second reason why often on paper I will make the hole ahead of time and stitch from the top down to the bottom is if you look at it closely, the hole creates like a puncture mark going down where it creates a ridge on the back side. And I like the look of it properly from the front better instead of the needle coming from under to on top. I'm not sure if I'm making total sense here, but if you experiment a little bit with some needle and thread in your paper and you play around with poking your holes from the front to the back or the back to the front, you will notice a difference and maybe it doesn't bother you. I will say when I'm working in an art journal spread where you see both sides of that piece of paper, I don't worry about it as much because there is really no technically a right or a wrong side. But on this one, I'm working on a separate sheet of paper and I'm going to be putting all of these onto um, cardboard, well, cereal box weight cardboard, so a light cardboard. So really you won't see the back of these at all when they're done. You'll just see the front. So might as well make the front look as good as possible, at least in my opinion. Okay, so I... And starting on that second page, which is the complimentary spread, and I know my five minutes are up, but this is just a challenge for myself to create something that's cohesive with the first spread without trying to replicate it, without doing the exact same thing, but bringing in some of those elements so that it really feels like it was thought out from the top to the bottom. In order to do that, I used the same color of wash that I did before. I'm also using the same stencil. I think that brings in some similarities then between the top and the bottom. And I'm going to be adding in some of this white gesso to give it dimension. So at this point, I remember thinking to myself it was feeling really flat before I added the white gesso. And... Yes, my goal was to keep it really simple, but it just felt way too flat to me. So I knew I needed to add a little bit more on to it. So those are the kind of things that go through my head when I'm making a decision of whether I should be adding more or just to leave it as more simple as it is. There's nothing wrong with simple and I love a simple spread, but I think there's a difference between it being simple and it just falling flat. Um, sometimes it falling flat is the color that's used or um, the transparency. Maybe it's the materials. I don't know. There's not always a specific thing that we can put words to of why something does not feel 
like it's oomphed up enough. I don't, I'm making that those words up, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's just an unexplainable thing where you just know you need to be adding a little bit more onto what you're doing. So a few little collage pieces, still super simple adding on, but now that dark black that's in the lower left-hand corner gets brought up all the way to the upper right-hand corner. Your eye kind of knows where to go as you're looking around this spread. And sometimes you just have to lead the viewer's eye where you want it to go. I'm also going to add in that craft water activated tape just because it's another element that's on the bottom but then again it's not going to take away from anything that I'm doing because it's in a really neutral color and I added that wash back over it as well so with all of the supplies that I use I try to list them in the description below but please feel free to ask if I missed anything and I hope that you guys are following along. Are you having a chance to create for yourself? Are you participating in this project? Do you plan to participate later? Let me know. I want to chat with you guys. So make sure to leave a comment down below so that I can talk with you. So I'm adding just a few final little art marks. Again, I think it was just a little something to oomph up the page and bring everything together with that dark black only being in a couple spots. It was really quite pronounced. And so adding these little small marks, I think just kind of ties things all together a little bit more with that deep contrasting color. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching and if you haven't watched the previous days, make sure to go back and watch those. All right, you all, I'll see you tomorrow for day 10. Have a good one.